morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. And Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. We'll see y'all later. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Seriously, Merry Christmas, and may the Lord Jesus bless richly today. We have got a so much to get into this morning. So if you would, please have a word of prayer with us. Let's pray. Father, we give you praise this morning in Jesus' name. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father, we bless your name this morning. We thank you so much for being our God, Lord. Come in and have your way. Speak, Lord. Your people are ready to listen. We are going to the next level with you, Lord. We are making room for Jesus on this day. Thank you, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help us. Hide us behind your cross, Lord. Jesus, we desire to speak with you, see you, be a part of what you're doing. Talk to us, Lord. Cleanse us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're in our book, uh, Realize Everything Succeeds Under Loving the Son. Realize Everything Succeeds Under Loving the Son. And turn with me, if you will, to page number two. Today, we're going to talk about salvation, justification, sanctification, and glorification. And for those people who are really going to get into this thing and take it to the next level, I beg you, I beg your participation. And um, to... The, the three people that, um, with the missing link being found, and I'll explain all that a little later, but to, to Kelvin, to Terrence, and the Tigra, I mean, uh, Kesia, Kelvin, Terrence, and Kesia, take contemporaneous notes right now for the rest of your life. For the rest of your life, don't leave anything out right now. When we rewrite this book, it's going to be for the next generation. So you guys will do the rewrite. It may be for your generation. It may be for your children's generation. But we have a long-term plan going in that the book will be rewritten. We, we're, we're learning as we go, but we're also realizing that we got a plan for the future. Short-term, we're going to study and learn and gather. Long-term, we're going to write another book. And Jerry and I decided this morning that the new book results this Realize Everything uh, Succeeds on the Letting the Sun is the first book. The second book title is going it's, it's to, the acronym R E S U L T S, Results, in black, big, bold, black writing, going down the page. Remember that. So, your new design for your new book is going to be results with the same words, but it's going to be highlighted in results. All right? So, we, we got long term plans, we got short term plans. That being said, we, we, we're kind of in agreement about the lazy church. That page one is pretty good. Page two is where the changes are going to come in here at. We're going to see where we're going because we are a discipling church. We're a teaching church. The Bereans in the book of Acts, they search the scriptures daily. They were always in God's word. We want to have a name like the Bereans, that we're always about God's word. And, and uh, the question that I've gotten from a lot of you guys this week was something that was said last week was about... Uh, Redemption was left off of the, of the book. So we got salvation, justification, sanctification, and glorification. Now that the first word really should be now that we look back because we're into it, it should be redemption. So write that in your book, redemption. Redemption, salvation, justification, sanctification, and glorification for the new book. That one word that was left out of this book is redemption. And I want to explain to you all today I pray anyway that I can about what's being said. So before we get into this, you can understand it better. Now, here's what I need for you to do. Follow me with your hearts and your ears, please. And listen, follow me as I follow Christ, as the Holy Spirit leads me. And, and, and be real careful about this. Redemption is this. It is when in the, in the end of the Old Testament in Malachi chapter 4, the hearts of mankind were so far away from God that God sent a plan, and the plan is called the plan of redemption. So God's going to, he owns us. He cre he's our creator. He is Jehovah God. He's our creator. He's Elohim. He's our creator. All right? So 
we had gotten so far away from him, God said, I got a plan. The, the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, God, and the Son decided that Jesus would go down and be packed in a baby's body. He would identify with the man's creation, God's creation, which is a man. And so in the fullness of time, Galatians 4 says, keys you taking notes, Galatians 4. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, Jesus. Guys, we're going to rewrite the book, so I really need you. Carmen, I need your notes, too. Help me out here. And God sent his son, uh, Malachi 4. God did speak to man for 400 years. Remember, Malachi 4, God speak to man for 400 years. The Gospels come in, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. Jesus is going to speak, and he's going to send his son. After heaven has his meeting, Jesus, the person of God in Christ, and the person of God is Christ, he comes to earth in a baby's body. The world celebrates that as Christmas. Now, it's not about money and finances. It's about a gift God's going to give us. Look for the gift. Now, me personally, you just put a blank, but my gift, the greatest gift God ever gave me was the forgiveness of my sins, period. That's the greatest gift that Christ, he canceled my sin debt, paid in full. That's the greatest gift that money, I don't, nothing can purchase that one. So Christ comes down. His assignment is he's being born at Christmas time to die. When he dies, he lives a perfect and a sinless life. Now God has a perfect substitute for us to get back to God. So the perfect substitute is Christ. So, so God says in the gospel, I didn't, in Matthew 5, that he didn't come to abolish the laws and the prophets, but he came to fill it up, to fill it to the full. Everything always pointed to Jesus coming. You taking notes? Everything always pointed to Christ coming. Christ came. He kept all 613 laws perfectly, all of them. So now God says, this is my beloved son. Follow him, hear him, listen to him. So now he tells the world he got a new plan. And this redemption plan is follow his son, Jesus. So when we follow Jesus, just, just follow Jesus. When you get your eyes set on Jesus and whatever he says in this New Testament, this new agreement, that's what we do. The Old Testament is not obsolete. It's just been filled to the full. It was fulfilled in Jesus. So now we're following Jesus. Jesus comes, he lives a perfect and a sinner's life according to Hebrews 4. You see how these fours keep coming up? Hebrews 4, Malachi 4. You see, listen, he lives a perfect and a sinner's life. But remember, he's rejected by his very own. He is Jewish. He was created. The nation of Israel was supposed to be a point of light for the world. They didn't do it. They still haven't done it. So because they rejected God in the Old Testament, God's going to give us a new agreement that's going to be fulfilled through the, the blood of his son. Jesus. We're going to follow Jesus. He's going to fulfill to the full everything. That's what we teach about in Tuesday night Bible study. How so many people fought against Jesus and all he's doing is doing God's perfect will. So when we follow Jesus, just like he got rejected and going to get put down and all that, remember it's going to happen to you. And I'm talking about redemption now so I can get you to salvation. But you have to understand this redemption clause first. God made an agreement with his son. The son came. And he did just what he was supposed to do. He lived a perfect life. Then he died for us at Calvary. Now, this is where you got to write in this work called the gospel of redemption. Redemption is the gospel. It is the life, it's the death, it's the burial, it's the resurrection. And the fifth point is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Remember that. He came one time. The fifth point is the second coming. Now, there are more promises in the Old Testament about him coming the second time than the first time. So throughout all this redemption experience now, uh, we follow Christ. Malachi said he was coming. He came, and he turned the hearts of God's people back to God. That's what he did, and that's, what, that's why, who we are. We're, we're his witnesses, Acts chapter 1. He, he told all of us to be his witnesses. In Matthew 28, he, the Great Commission, he says, be his witnesses. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 through 10, the last commission, he should be his witness. So in redemption, you got to, a part of that, you got to have the great commission that's commissioned to all people who 
who named the name of Jesus, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. The last commission, which is Acts chapter 1. And when you put it, put it out and put Acts chapter 1 is the last commission. But make sure you put Acts chapter 2 because that's when the Holy Spirit comes in. When Jesus leaves, Acts chapter 2, it's time for Jesus. He's going to die at Calvary. And Jesus is going to promise a better helper than him. The person of Christ could only be in one place at one time. The Holy Spirit could be everywhere. God's Spirit could be everywhere. So he said he's got a helper, an advocate that's coming called the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. So you got the person of God in Christ. You got God Almighty and you got his Holy Spirit. Now, the three have got our work. They work together in heaven. So God's plan is that we have got to be one with Christ so his spirit can envelop us. And so we'll be at oneness with God, just like the, we're just doing God's plan of redemption. All right. Now, when you understand that and then you personalize all of that, I just said as a person. Redemption for me, the personal story is this. Regardless of how good or how smart I think I am. God had already set a plan in place 2,000 years before Christ got here. He set in place again uh, 19, 1960 years before I came, because I came in 1963. So 3,963 years before I came here, God already had a plan for me. When I accepted Christ, that God, you know what? You really did create all this. You created me. Redemption is when I know that you forgave me of my sin because I, I see what you did. Redemption is when the light comes on in your heart and Christ really lives in your heart. Now, it's, all, it's past tense. Already, God has already done it. But it was when you caught up, when the light came on with you. You know that you've been redeemed. You know that Christ died for you. Are we together? When, when the redemption say, he died for me. He said, yes, I did. The cross is the proof. That's the evidence. And you say, you know what, God? I, I, I get that. That's when you got an audience of one. It's just you and him saying, you said, you know what? You, you, you died for me. You really did. And he said, he, his word said, I'm forgiven of my sin when you accept that Romans chapter 10, verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that from this point on, Jesus is going to lead the Lord Jesus. And believe in your heart that God did raise him from the dead. You shall be saved because with your heart, when he came in your heart, redemption, you believe in the righteousness with your mouth. Confession was made to salvation. That's when redemption happened. Now that I am redeemed, God said, because you did buy into the program of my son, you have accepted Christ and what he's saying. He is Lord. And he did. Just, he just say, see, redemption is, 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 is when you acknowledge that he's Lord and that you know that he saved your soul. When you know that. That's an agreement you got. Well, that's a personal agreement you just made with God. That's redemption. And then God's because you made an agreement with my son that's etched in Emmanuel's blood, in, in his blood, that I saved your soul, that your soul has been set aside. So now we go from redemption to salvation. You know that you're saved. Once saved, always saved. When you make that agreement with God in your heart and you know you did, and he's Lord, you know you've been saved. Once you become saved and you know God has saved you, that's where the next point comes in, salvation. Now, after salvation, you got two interchangeable parts here, and I'm going to show you why. I'm, I'm not going to put one in front of the other. I'll show you why I put one one time and why I put another one time. But I think the order I want to change is also, Carmen. I got salvation. I want to go with sanctification and then justification, then glorification. All right? So I want to change that order. We together? Have I lost y'all? All right, so we got salvation. Now, now look at look at it. Let's just have a heart to heart with Jesus. When you confess that and you know that his blood brought you back to him, it it we our sin has separated us so far from God. The only thing that could buy us back, purchase us back to God, was the blood of Jesus. That's it. So Jesus' blood being shed for you at Calvary, that's why the cross has always got to come into play. The cross has always got to come into play. So when you realize that it was Emmanuel's blood that saved your life, and the reason why I call him Emmanuel is because God with us. When you know that it was Christ's blood, 
that brought purchase you back, ransom you back, because we were being held hostage by sin. Well, we were being held hostage by sin. So he bought us back from sin and from hell and from death. And so when we got saved, we realized that, God, you saved me. And so now that I'm saved, I need to go to church. I need to go to Sunday school. I need to participate. I need to fall down. I need to get up. So, But I need to get to, uh, a part of your salvation experience is being disciple. It's being taught. Understanding what the Bible says. Understanding what this Christian world is all about. So in salvation, you're getting saved. You're getting discipled. You're getting taught. And once you're being taught, when you're being taught, the more you're taught, the Holy Spirit's going to tell you something where you're supposed to be the grass cutter. You're supposed to be a deacon. You're supposed to be a minister. You're supposed to be a helper. You're supposed to work administrative. He's, when you get saved, the Holy Spirit gives everybody a gift. Remember that salvation, Holy Spirit, Jesus is left, but the Holy Spirit gives everybody at least one gift. The book of Proverbs says that one gift will make room for itself. The gifts oftentimes double itself. But everybody gets at least one gift at salvation, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives to whoever he wills according to 1 Corinthians 12 and Romans 12. He gives a gift, whatever he gives, that's what he decided to do. He knows God mind better than you do and I do. He knows you better than you do, so he gives a gift. When he gives you the gift at salvation, walk in your gift. It may not be what you want. You may want something more glamorous, more glorious, but he's a walk in your gift. So at salvation, when you, when you get your gift, operate in your gift and church, keep getting taught. Then you're going to find out the Holy Spirit really gave you two gifts or ten gifts. You're going to see more gifts and operate in them. And all you're doing, you're saying now in, in salvation, now God is sanctifying you. Sanctification is when God sets you apart for service to him. So he might have you in administration. He might have you in cleanup duty. He might have you in a carpool. But, but sanctify me, now he's giving you gifts to work in. So sanctification is being set apart for service to God. So once you're saved and you're being taught and discipled, that's where leadership comes in, Ron. Leadership, you got to see what God is doing with people. You, you got to see, John, I see God working in you in this area. Mary, I see God working with you in this area. But as an overseer, you got to have an oversight to see, tell people everybody needs a pastor. Even the pastor needs a pastor. Everybody needs somebody to hold them accountable. That's God's plan of redemption. Remember now, everything's going to go back to redemption. Because God oversees his, Christ is head of the church. That's it. I'm just his good sheepdog to run around and bark at people. That's all good pastors. He's a good sheepdog, run around and bark. But Christ is head. That's God that. That's why you don't put him down. You just pray for him. He ain't nothing but old sheepdog, good old English sheepdog. So listen, when you go through the justification, you may be, I'm sorry, sanctification. You, you may be, you may think you have 10 gifts, but really you have four. So, but you know, and you operated pretty decently in all of them. But God said, the two I want you to work in is A and B. And that's when you see justification because God has declared you righteous to work as a minister, as a deacon, as uh, whatever God, and he defines them in 1 Corinthians 12 and Romans 12. God defines them. So, you know, you understand now that you got redemption is when you open your heart and let Christ in because he, he's standing at the door knocking. Salvation is when you let him in and you made that agreement that he said, I know you let my son in your heart and you are saved. And then he's going to set you apart. But I need you to get taught during your salvation period to learn more about sanctification. Because as a pastor, I want to do 30 things. But he said, I just need you to be a pastor, man. That's all. But, but I'm a pastor who teaches, but I'm really an evangelist. That's all. I, I love Jesus. You can call him whatever you want to, but I'm an evangelist. I love Jesus. I don't care about those other titles. I just say he loved Jesus. So salvation, sanctification. Again, you're going to have several hats, but which one is, what's your heart? I just love Jesus. I just want people to know about Jesus. That's my personal. Justification is when God declares you to be righteous. He said, now let's go to the next level. When God, and see, don't, do not put your hands to the plow and take them off. When God say you're right and you're ready, don't stop. Don't look back. Don't make any excuses. 
because of God had justification is when God, Romans chapter four, when God declares you to be righteous. And if God say you're right, baby, you're right. So justification is when God declares you right. It's not you lying and saying who you are and what you're doing. It's when God proves and he shows evidence that you are who he says that you are. And justification, sanctification, and justification are lifelong processes. A lot of blanks, a lot of question marks in there. But trust God, follow Jesus. For, for justification and sanctification, just trust God, follow Jesus. No excuses. Be willing to be corrected. But that's when, you, when, you, when you're doing it now. Amen? Amen? And the last one, the culmination of everything is glorification. It is eternal. That when we go to heaven, all of this work, your labor is not in vain. You hear that 1 Corinthians 15 all the time. Knowing that your labor, it is not in vain. Yeah. Do your work heartily as unto the Lord and not as unto men. And that's when you go and hear, you hear what men say you always close out with. Well done, my good and my faithful servant. Or you can go the other route. Matthew chapter 7, when he said, get away from me, I never knew you. I don't know you. You did your thing. You didn't do my thing. But you, the, the words that every believer desires to hear, the blessed hope that we have at the end of this Christian race, glorification. Well done, my good and my faithful servant. And from that point, you get your glorified body that won't ever get sick again, that won't ever die again, that won't ever need a haircut. You know? It's going to be just that sweet. But that's the goal. That's your end game. Glorification, put it down on our jazz, your end game. Your end game in life, the end of this thing. I want to hear Christ say, well done, my good and my faithful servant, and I want to get that glorified body. I left out a whole chapter in this book, then. That's another chapter, Clem. But you know, see that, that and, and here's here's my deal. I want to give it to this generation. I want them to write it. And then they're gonna Jerry and I are gonna turn the rights over this book over to the church. They're gonna rewrite it and they're gonna sell it to the world. Because the world needs to hear this. And they're gonna make money, they're gonna go into the ABC development, and God's gonna have a finance plan where they ain't gotta have no parties and Solicitation and bake funds and cookie stuff stuff. We gonna because God's already supplying our needs for the future. Yeah, get on board with the vision. It's happening. So glorification is the end game. Make sure you put down that the last chapter we're gonna put in the Bible in the, in the new book. End game glorification, eternal glorification. The end game. We got a new ending to the book. I don't know how it's gonna end up now, but y'all see what we're doing. Organize. Yeah, Tim, Casey, Terrence, Jay, Casey, let's do it. Let's do it. Y'all be determined. The missing link has been found. Let's do it. Yeah, you are empowered publicly now to take this book and take it to the next level. Take contemporaneous notes. Don't miss out. Don't stop. Collaborate. Put your notes together. It's about God first. His kingdom. It's not about you guys. Not, it's about God's first results. God's results. Anyway, any questions? Go ahead, Mr. Agee, sir. Um, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I don't know if y'all do. I think it's in the part where we go through this struggle and in salvation. You know, like you said, Jesus... 2,000 years of history has taken place. And I'm wondering, this is just my, in my mind, I'm saying it took man 2,000 years to realize he could not do it yes. by himself. Yes, sir. He could not do it for himself. Jay, right? are y'all writing? Are y'all writing? Take contemporaneous uh, notes now, because that's me, I'm going to say, Jay. Yeah, so, so by the time that Christ comes on the scene, there is the source. Uh, there is the the opportunity to be complete through Christ. And I, I wonder 
in that salvation, you know, we accept him as Lord and Savior, but do we really see that we cannot be what we were called to be unless he comes into our life? Yes, sir. The, the, the world is on a different course, and a lot of people think that, you know, it was about when they were created that God had set them, you know, to do everything for himself. But the truth is that, that man was created to have a need for Jesus and but that Jesus needed to be in the life of men. I, I guess I'm just saying, I wonder do people still try to struggle with the fact that they think they can do more than what, more without Christ than they can with Christ. No, Jay, get up and answer that. Because he, he addressed that yesterday. He, Jay said, come on, come on up, Jay. He talked about his pride. When the light came on with, with him, Jay, yesterday. When he said his problem was his pride. And until, until he could confess that in his heart, that the darkness was his pride, he couldn't see the light. I couldn't see him. He couldn't buy into this Jesus thing until, and nobody coerced him. But he said his problem was pride. When he confessed that, he saw a need for a Savior. Dude, just yesterday, not 24 hours ago, he saw a need for a Savior just yesterday. So just what you're saying, he just confirmed yesterday. That, and, and that's why you got to teach. You got to say this. And they got to write. If I have to pay somebody to, to, to listen to these notes and write them down, the book will get rewritten. I choose to let the link do it. They don't have to. But it'll get done, and it'll get done right and properly. It will. But I want him to, re to respond and kind of that because the bottom line is what you said until the light comes, what you said. You can tell a 30-year-old that the light came on him yesterday. Just You weren't here. But just what you said is what happened yesterday. Now, the message you just told him, he's prepared to take it out there because the light came on yesterday. Go ahead, respond to it, dude. So I, I wholeheartedly believe that without meeting the space of knowing that you need Jesus, you will continue to believe like, okay, it's on me, yes. but it's not. And you, you'll fail every time that you try to do it on your own. You may feel like you have small victories or small pieces of success, but in the end, every time you run into the fact where you know it ain't me. So. But only when the light comes on, Jay. The light came on to you just when the light came on, I looked at it, I knew then that you were it. I knew, I saw your experience yesterday when Christ spoke to you. When, you, when he admitted, it's a big thing to admit you got a pride demon. It is. A young man to say they got a pride. And, 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 but see, that's when you, when you confess, you get released. Because the devil knows you got a pride demon. God knows you got a pride. We, you know, people see it. But when you let it go, it's, it's, you're disarming the devil. You've disarmed him. Now go write down what you just said. Thank you, sir. No, no, listen, guys, this is, this is it's not about us. It's about the world. And Ron, that's spot on. What if Ron don't say it and then Jay don't respond? Ron didn't know what happened yesterday. All this is about God's kingdom. Let's go back to redemption. God has a plan. And all we are, we're just being used by the Lord to do it. We're going to, this book is about, it's 50 some pages. It'll probably be 150 when we get down to 200. But it's for the world. It's for the world. It's for, it's, it may be for Kingston generation. It may be for y'all. But we're going right, please. Take ownership. Jay was talking yesterday about ownership. Take ownership in this thing. We're, we're blessing you with you, giving it to us. God gave it us freely. We give it to you guys freely. All that stuff Ron went through in life, God gave it to him just so he can bless this generation right here. Amen. Yeah, it, 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 so it wasn't no junk. It probably hurt him, crippled him. But look at what God just did to bless his kingdom. Amen. All things are working together for the good. Amen. For those who love the Lord and call according to his purpose. Go ahead, Miss G. You know, if we wouldn't have gone back to redemption, then we truly wouldn't have understood what salvation is because as, as a people, we can say, and I know I've said it, that I don't see how I can say that I'm saved because I'm still doing some of the things that I used to do, but I am saved. But I, now, going back to redemption, that's when the light goes off in my heart. Yes. So I think as a people... The light doesn't go off in our heart at the beginning. We just say we're saved. As a believer. As a believer. As a believer. Yeah. 
that, that that's when you know, boom, the light came on. Christ really did die for me. He did. I mean, and that's when you know you've been redeemed. And God said, He did. He really did. And it becomes personal that you got a relationship with him. So what did he tell you to do? Whether you want to do it or not, your, he's in your heart and your hands, your feet gonna go because you know that's what he just told me to do. Because he has a relationship with you. What he told you, take notes, contemporaneous notes. Guys, y'all, we we're giving y'all the gold mine. Let me tell you how to how to shaft the gold, all right? You gotta go in there, you gotta take your time. You're gonna take some digging, you gotta have some tools, but get the gold out the mine. Anyone else? I look at what you're saying and what Jerry said about when the light goes off Speak in your me. heart. When the light goes off in your heart, I think for months I had been praying about surrendering, totally, totally surrendering, not not holding on to what I want to hold on, but totally surrendering to the Lord. And, uh, and I think I finally understand total surrenderance but I had to be put in a place. Uh, I had to be put in a place in which um, yeah. I had to realize that I couldn't do it on my own, that I, I can't stay independent and, and I can't stay closed off and that I need people, you know. And, uh, and I get that understanding now even better than just hearing it being told to me, you know what I'm saying, that I know now that, you know, that it was never God's plan for me to be, uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's all right to be independent to a certain point. But then at some point, you know, when he tells you it's time to let that independence go and let people in and, and, and let, let, let some of that weight go off of you and trust others, you know, that light goes off and you get a, you get a better understanding. Now I understand more when the word says it's not about me, yes. but it's about him and it's about him putting people in your path and, who can, who can uh, impact you and who can help you, who can pray for you and who can truly be there for you. That means the world, but to really accept that and be willing to change your old ways, it's magnitude. Hold on, you're right, Angela. And I've known you, you've been on the link 15 years, but it's good to see the light come on in 15 years on an old saint. And see how the miracle, just what she said today, right now. But let me go one deeper with you. That's beautiful. That's the miracle. That's surrendering. When you can say that out loud at 15, so many leaders, pastors, teachers in churches, the light don't go on, but they're, they're officers, they're leaders, but the light never went off in their heart. Deacon Baker told me, now everybody's got a hard head, mm -hmm. but when you acknowledge God as Elohim, that he is your creator, if anybody knows how to break you, God knows how to break you. I can't do it. Your husband can't do it, but God knows how to get your attention. The baker said this. He said, uh, the Lord had taken his heart out of his chest mm -hmm. and put that, that defibrillator thing in there. Mm -hmm. But God knew how to get me his attention. He tried 17,000 times to get his attention. Couldn't get it. But the one time he said, I, I, I bet this right here will get you. Now he's a deacon. You, can't, you have to make him go home. Mm -hmm. Here's the deal. When God gets your attention and the light go off, you, when you know you've been redeemed, the redeemed of the Lord, they're going to say so, so just what you did. They're going to say it. You, it's like Jeremiah says, like fire right, yeah. shut up in my bone. I couldn't hold that thing back right. if I wanted to. That's what it's all about. And your testimony is what people need to hear because that's what a power. But what if Ron don't, what if, what if you don't meet with Jadim yesterday? What if Ryan don't say that? What if everybody's just lazy to the lazy church and none of this happens? God's kingdom doesn't get blessed. And that somebody has got to step up in faith and tell the truth and shame the, the devil. devil. Thank you, man. Yes, man. We're going to get in the book, y'all. I'm, I'm promise you. We're going to at least read the first paragraph. I'm just thankful to the Lord that we are going to the nuts and bolts of our faith, of the gospel. And um, not just the young people need it. We older folks need to get a good understanding of this. And I think that's what we are doing this morning. And it, it, it really 
makes us free when we understand Miss Miss G. We are people who are work oriented, and we want to work. We we don't even understand how you can get something without working for it, and um, that's just not how this gospel plan work when we talk about redemption somebody paid the price yes, for sir. us yes sir and then turned around we were slaves and then turned around and set us free yes sir that's what redemption Tell means right to me right yes. who does that you know Jesus. we go buy people and so we can enslave them you know we may be a little bit better or whatever but we don't just turn them loose free. Uh, it just has been very difficult for me. And I've been on this journey longer than most of you been alive. It was hard for me to understand this principle that we don't, it's not by us being good. Right. That it's not, I, I don't earn any of this. Right. Jesus paid the price for everybody, everybody in the whole wide world forever. The price has been paid. But the problem is we don't get in the process by accepting him. And uh, this whole, I just look forward to hearing more and more because I like that. I love salvation. I love it all. Justification, though, got me because I know I'm guilty. I know I'm guilty, but I stand before him. And he says, not guilty. Right. You know, not guilty. Right. So all of this as we move through to glorification and everything, I think we all need it. I believe we're all going to be better because we're going to understand what Jesus really did do. Miss Clem, let me tell you something. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the heart of somebody redeem you. And so y'all hear the older saints talking? That's what they need to do. They, they need it. Tell the truth. Because I know I'm guilty, but God says I'm not guilty. But but because of Christ, I'm, I'm not guilty because of Jesus. I mean, but I'm guilty. But God said, no, I, I know you are, but you're not because Jesus paid for you. And that's how I know I'm not worthy because I'm saying, Lord, I mean, you're right and I'm wrong. Uh, can I make it up? Can I? That's when you got a personal relationship with the Lord. I said, Lord. Because I want to do something, because I know I'm, I'm not earning my way, but I know that, you know, you really love me enough, and I just want to do more for you, because I, I, I really receive this gift. Uh, and, and like I say, the greatest gift I ever received is the gift of forgiveness of sin. That's just, that's the ultimate Christmas gift. That's the ultimate life gift, that I am a forgiven sinner. And for that, God calls me a saint. Go ahead, dude. You know, as you went through the, 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 the process of redemption and, and understanding that, and we just said, as soon as Clem said that, that it just doesn't make sense to us that, that Jesus would come and, and redeem us back to himself when we didn't deserve it. We didn't do anything to, to do it, to deserve it or, or to, to even to receive it. It just doesn't make sense in the, in the logic of our minds, but the, 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 just to believe it, as you said, just because God said it, I believe it. And, and to take it in and, and receive it as our own for not have done anything in this generation where we have to, we've, we learned that we, if we wanted this, we had, to, we had to work for it. We had to do all these other things. But Jesus just said, he opened up his arms and said, it's paid. Paid in full, as, as you said, Pastor, in the, just to understand redemption is the key to salvation. Yes. But you know, it, it, when the Lord gave this to me, see how I left that out? And I got to remain teachable because I don't have it all together. And I want to live and I want to learn and I want to grow. That's why the second revised edition is what it's going to be. It's going to be involved in that. The revised edition is going to be in that. Go ahead, Miss Keezy. Miss says, Miss who? Miss Yamika says, like Miss like Miss G said, it doesn't go off in our heart. Pride and the lack of love is a great hindrance. I think we right, know. Right, lack of love. Right, lack of love. There you go. Go ahead. 
I think we know that we need Jesus and want him to be Lord and Savior, but for some strange reason, we still feel like we know what we need and yeah. how we need it better than Jesus. Yeah. We try to be little helpers, but trust and believe God will sit you down and let you know whatever situation you're trying to control, he has already worked it out. Ask her if we can have her permission to use that direct statement in the next book. We All of that need to go. Tim, I don't know how you can collaborate ours together, but it needs to go in the next book because, see, that's rich, and that's a part of the problem. Just what she said, just what she, all this stuff. Do we need to get a professional recorder? Can somebody, somebody do this for us? It's on Facebook. I just, but we need somebody to record it for us and do it, to write it. I guess my, if we don't have any volunteers, somebody's got to do this the right way. It's for the world. It's, huh? Tim, it's done. Y'all put it on the notes. Tim's going to do it. We just want somebody to organize the notes. The revised edition is going to the world. And when it's time for us to advertise and, and news releases to the world, we're going to the world because we got something to say. Go ahead, Pam. My thoughts were along the same line as Jamaica, but I also wanted to say that um, in speaking with someone about salvation and they can't understand that they don't have to do anything else they feel like once they accept the lord that there's something supposed to come after that and they don't really fully understand that they're saved and and you don't have to do anything else but follow jesus and they seem to go backwards because they feel like it should be more to it than that and i think us learning just this right here is enough to help us to better minister to those who expect more and, and just don't see it coming. Well, Pam, listen, I'm with you. And what is showing us, me, right now, that we got to go backwards before we can go forward. Right. We've got to explain this redemption thing because salvation, people hear that, but before we do salvation, we got to make a get, a bit of, get a better definition of redemption because if they go backwards, we got to go backwards with them and meet them there but we ain't staying at redemption. We're going to salvation. Yeah, so, I mean, all this goes together in the notes. It's got people. I'm telling we got another chapter in the book today alone. So we, we got to go. I mean, but let's, let's do it. We are up to the challenge. We can do this. Yeah, we can do this. We are going to do this. All right, let's go. <laughs> Y'all ready? Now, I start off right. Now, at least I got one part right. So these four terms are interconnected. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> First sentence in the book. I got, me, I got one right. <laughs> these four terms are interconnected. Salvation is directly tied to justification. Salvation when Jesus, Lord, Savior, saves your soul eternally from the devil's hell. We got that right. Salvation, therefore, is directly tied to justification. We talked about that. We just expounded more upon it. Justification when God declares us righteous. We're justified because we believe in God, accept the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Remember that. And he said, now you're ready. Salvation and justification lead to sanctification. I don't know if I'm going to switch that around, but like I say, they're interconnected. Now, remember that. All right, so they're interconnected because I'm not trying to make one. I'm not saying it's automatically like this, but when God declares you righteous, he could be doing one something mean that he's not doing in you and, and vice versa. Sanctification comes after one has been saved. That's the only time God can set you apart is when you've been saved. Sanctification occurs when God set us apart for his service. Highlight that in your book. Maybe we need to have that in bold black print. Not about you anymore is his service. Big, bold black print, his service. Now, if it's about him, it's not about you. It's his service. Big, bold, black letters. Thus, salvation, justification, sanctification are interconnected and will eventually lead to glorification. We agree with that. When we achieve glorification, we, we acquire a glorified body. This is in heaven, by the way. A body that cannot become sick or die. So glorification, sanctification are directly connected. All of the pathways on the spiritual <laughs> pilgrimage. Whew. I want to... I want to uh, give you some comments from last week, 
but I have to at least go over the first one to get us started for next week. All right. I I, I honestly told I don't know if it was Keith. I, I honestly I told somebody who asked me. I knew we would, we would only do Romans three and ten, and we almost didn't get it. But that's the only one we'll do because it's super duper long. And I'm gonna show I'm gonna show you something today. I pray. That'll get us started for next week. Then I want to do some comments that people gave last week to close out Carmen Baker uh, for uh, to start us up for next week. But turn to Romans chapter 3, verse 10. When you get to say amen, you got a question, Keith? Zach has a comment. He says, in the last week, my eyes have been opened to my spiritual reality. God broke me and showed me that I don't run anything and that no matter how high my horse is, that I need more Jesus in my life. My decisions and how I love my wife and how... I have a new love for her and a new love for Christ and has for the church. Amen, brother. Amen. Again, ask these people when, you, when they're attacking, if we can use their comments. We don't, we don't, we can use like uh, Zach S., but we don't put anybody's name, but, or Arthur Unknown. You know, but we want, we want to use this stuff because this is rich. And the comments page is going to be really rich. All right, here we go. When, when you look at Romans chapter 3, Roman, Romans... It's a good book for doctrine. It's probably the ultimate book for doctrine, for what you believe. If you want to grow strong in the Bible, read the book of Romans. It will take you a while. You probably got to reread it. But it is strong about foundational doctrine. Romans chapter 3, verse 9 through, uh, let, me, let me just read. But I want to read a few verses, but I, the, one we're gonna, the main one is 10. What, it says, all have sinned. Highlight in your Bible Psalm 14, 1 through 3, and uh, Psalm 53, 1 through 4. You're not going to understand this passage correctly until you read those, but I'm going to read them today. I, I was going to go over those today to show you how interconnected. Remember, everything in the Bible has got to be interconnected. God confirms his word by his word. He'll confirm it. God will, everything that's in here, he will confirm it, and the Holy Spirit will give you peace with it. All right, it says that in chapter, nine, in chapter 3, verse 9. What then? Are we better than they know? Tomorrow, he was talking about the, uh, I tell you, Romans, let's go to Romans chapter 3, verse 5. So you'll understand why I started 9. But if our unrighteousness demonstrates the righteousness of God, what should we say? Is God unjust when he inflicts wrath? Paul said, I speak as a man. Certainly not. For then how will God judge the world? That's the question. For if the truth of God has increased through my lies to his glory, why am I still judged a sinner? And why not say, let us do evil that good may come, as we are slanderously reported, and some affirm that we say, their condemnation is just, to be condemned because of stupidity, and thinking you can have it your way and do it your way. Just what Zach just said. But anyway, now that he said, Paul's going to make it clear to the Romans, the church at Rome is the largest church in the world this time. He's about, what, what y'all talking about? Everybody has sinned, all have sinned. What then? Are we better than they? No, not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that all, everybody under sin. There no exception to the rule. All are under sin. Then Paul said, as it is written, that God wrote in the Old Testament, there is none righteous, no, not one. Now, how many is not one? Zero, none, nada, never, no. So we get it, that, that not, none, not one. Spanish, his, uh, English is the same number. Nada, zero, never. Hmm? All right, so there are none righteous, no, not one. There is no one who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. This, this reminds you of social media. 
Their tongue is an open tomb. With their tongue, they practice this. They have practiced deceit. The poison of asp, the snakes, is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood, destruction, and misery in their ways. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God be before their eyes. Mm -hmm. Now we know whatever the law says, it is to those who are under the law. Because Romans 6 is going to tell us that we are under grace and no longer under the law. Write that down, Jay. We're no longer under the law, but we're under grace because we have accepted Jesus. So now we get the grace of God and we're not confined to the 613 laws. Because we have accepted, in redemption, we accepted Christ. And now we got a new agreement with God. It's not the law. The law pointed us to redemption in Christ. And we got a new agreement called grace. The covenant of grace. Now we know that whatever the law says, it is to those who are under law. That every mouth may be stopped. And all the world may be guilty before God. Miss Clem, that's what she said. She didn't know where I was going, but that's what she just said. See, again, how God confirms his word. That's, you know you're guilty before God. The only thing that cleanses you is redemption, the shed blood of Jesus. But she knows she's guilty, but she's made righteous because of what God said about his son and her. So now God does not see the guilty person. He sees the blood of his son. Amen. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, remember this, whatever you're doing by the law with your prideful self, no flesh will be justified. It won't be declared right. God can't deal with sin. God, God has never made an agreement with sin. And he ain't about to start with you. Did the cross prove that. God never made an agreement with sin. And he's about, not about to start now. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. The law told us that I'm guilty. That's what it did. It told me that I was guilty. Now I need for you to turn to... So, to two Psalms, it says Psalm 51 and Psalm 53. And watch what, how it says, and this is what we're going to go over next week. I don't want to rush y'all, but I'm telling you, it's, it's good, ain't it? It's Marcus, boy, you, you can take it home. Put it in a, in a doggy bag and take it home. No, Psalm 14 and 53. It's in the Bible. Clem, it's, right, it's right there. You see it? It's right there, Psalm 14 and Psalm 53. And watch the beauty of holiness in God's word. This was my plan to go over today, but God had another plan. Go ahead, Miss Kesey. Um, Al says, thank the Lord for this lesson because this is what we discussed yesterday. Instead of feeling defeated, trust in the Lord that he'll make a way because he always does. Amen. And he, ha he made a way. Jesus made a way for me one day. Calvary, baby, it's the cross. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. Listen, that's when the light comes on its heart, at the cross. The songwriter got it right, Ron. He got it right. At the cross is where I first saw the light. All right, now watch the comparison contrast from what the Bible says. Macmillan didn't write this. Romans chapter 3 Started out by saying Psalm 14, 1 through 3, Psalm 53, 1 through 4. Watch what it says about today's, how God prophesies. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. They have all turned aside. They have together become corrupt, and they meet on social media. There is none who does good, no, not one. Hold your finger there, turn over to Psalm 53. When you get to say amen? amen? Hold your hand at 53 and 14. All right, now, in 53, it's going to sound like a repetition. Mm -hmm. The fool has said in his heart, why does God keep calling us a fool? Mm -hmm. David wrote this, and what David says, he, he's just looking just what Miss Clem said, what they say, you look and you see, I'm the fool. Because I keep trying to do it on my own, 
And, and, and listen, there's a reason why it's kind of repetition. I'll tell you about that later. It's not the same song. It's, it's similar, but they're very much different. Because in 1J, you're going to see him as David as a Jew and him talking about God who saved him, rescued him. And the other one is going to, in 53, it's going to be for Gentiles, for us who are coming in, and we're going to see him as Elohim, as creator. That we're not going to see him necessarily through the same eye that David did. But when, when you personalize that redemption, you're going to see that he really did die for me. He really did come for me, and he really did die for me. Yeah, Christ really, God sent Jesus for Kenneth Harold Macmillan. He sent him for you, John Smith, Mary Jones. He sent him for you. Look at what 53 said. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and have done a bond of iniquity. There is none who does good. God looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if that see in who, who understand who seek God. Every one of them has turned aside. They have become, they have, to, they have together become corrupt. There is none who does good, not, no, not one. Not cinema, because you see, the Bible says, compare Romans 3 with Psalm 14 with Psalm 53. And they all confirm what God has been saying. All Paul is telling the church is what David already wrote. 2,000 years before the church is founded, God already had a solution for them, like he has a solution for us for this generation. It's already here. We don't have to have a rewrite of the Bible. God's got the, the answers in the book. But how many people are going to read the book? See, it takes time. When, when you, if you do Romans chapter 3 and 10, 3, verse 10, 9 and 10, you see you got to read from, you got to actually start at 5 to get an understanding of 9 and 10, and you got to close out at 18 to get a full understanding of it. Then the Bible says, go back to Psalm 14 and go back to Psalm 53. So see, one verse that led you throughout the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, and all the Holy Spirit doing is talking to you. God's plan of redemption, God just wanted to talk to you. He just wants you to talk back with him. Remember, he's got your heart, right? Yeah. He, he, he's got your heart. And that's what we want to make sure that whatever's being said, that that's, people understand so that's, we, we're going to start, we're going to go over that particular scripture starting next week. And we're going to see where the Lord takes us uh, from that point. Amen? We didn't get a chance to get into it like I want to, but at least you understand where I'm trying to go next week. We're going to do a comparison contrast with Romans 3 with 14. And by the way, add 52 in there because 52... Psalm 52, especially the beginning. Watch how God's word is just in harmony with our lives. And watch how Jesus will lead us. So you got Romans 3, that's going to take us to Psalm, the Bible says 14 and 53. And we're going to add in Psalm 52, especially verse 1 and 2. I'm going to ask you if you close out with me, please turn to the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. And I guess what we're going to do in the new book, we're going to have 10, we're going to add a totally, we're going to add a, this chapter 1 that we're working on now is going to be chapter 2 because chapter 1 has got to be redemption. Right? Amen. So we're going to go back and we're going to, we're going to redo it and chapter 1 will be total redemption, whatever we get out of this, and then we'll, we'll start chapter 2 with the sanctification glorification deal. We together? All right, turn to Ephesians chapter 1. I'll close out with this right here. So we got a plan. The book, Redemption, page 1. Starting at, well, we're going to do the Lazy Church. Then we're going to do Redemption, right? And then we're going to go to this. Oh, but I got, I got an insert that I want to put in there after Redemption. And it's Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 through 22, a scripture verse to take us to the next chapter. All right? Chapter, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 through 23. Just going to start off chapter 2. 
It is a prayer for spiritual wisdom. And people, please catch this. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him when he reveals himself to you in salvation and redemption. Here we go. Your key verse is this one. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory to, of, his saint, of, his, of his inheritance in the saint, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, not ours, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, we didn't have anything, and seated him in the right hand in the heavenly place, far above any principality, any power and dominion, and every name that is named, including COVID-19, not only in this age, but in the also age to come. And he put all things, including COVID-19, under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. He gave the power to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Rich, that's what I'm talking about right there. Let's pray. Be dismissed. We got a, we got a plan moving forward. Amen. Tim, you're on the team. You're the record secretary. Do it. Write it. Deacon and trainer, you got your assignment today. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we give you praise today in Jesus' name. We say thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for speaking to us, for talking to us, for guiding us and directing us, Lord. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help us know we got to go back. Help us to go back and not be afraid or ashamed to go back. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you that you're not finished with us yet, Lord. Father, we take your plans and we lay them at your feet. And we just pray that we'll see, we'll hear, we'll follow, we'll obey, Lord Jesus. Lord, we bless your name for the opportunities. We bless your name. Father, we uplift the revised edition. We uplift the young people. We, as Ms. Clemson, we thank for the older ones, the younger ones, for the body, for all of us needing each other. Come in, King Jesus. Come in, Lord. Let your word be amplified and glorified and go out to this generation. Lord Jesus, we love you so much and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come back and join us in 13 minutes, 1045. Thank you, guys.